In this tutorial, I will show you how to create light projectors in Blender. And so I'll show you how to project an image as a light source in your 3D scene. And as well as that, I'll also show you how to add in animated videos to make it look like a video projector. And then at the end of this video, I'll also show you a really easy and effective method for adding fog into your scene so that you can actually see the beams of light in the scene. And this method for adding a light projector only works in cycles, so it will not work in the EV rendering engine, so make sure you're using cycles. Now if you'd like to learn the basics of lighting in Blender, then I'd highly recommend checking out my Lighting in Blender for Beginners tutorial. I'll have a link in the description to that video if you'd like to check it out. And in that video, I go over many different basics of lighting in Blender, so I go over different types of lights, I also go over sky lighting, and how to light basic scenes. And speaking of lighting, before we start this video, I wanted to let you know about an amazing Blender add-on for getting realistic skies, sky lighting, and deep space backgrounds, and that is the Pro Atmo Blender add-on. The Pro Atmo add-on is an amazing Blender add-on for getting realistic sky lighting, as well as sky and space backgrounds. The add-on is very customizable, including settings for the ground, atmosphere, sun, clouds, planets, stars, and even nebula. The add-on also comes with some presets that you can choose from, like cloud presets and nebula presets. You can also add planets to your skies, and you can even create your own deep space backgrounds. You can find my full add-on review video with the link in the description, and if you purchase the add-on through my affiliate link, you'll be helping to support this channel. And if you'd like to download the project files for this tutorial, I've made the project files available for free on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page. Links are in the description. And also this robot model that I'm using is from my sci-fi worker robot tutorial. And this is a tutorial series that I created about a year ago. So I'll have a link in the description if you'd like to check out that tutorial series. So let me just show you how I set up the 3D scene if you want to set it up the same way that I have. So just as an example, I added in my worker robot. Again, links in the description if you'd like to check out that tutorial and then I wanted to add a backdrop object, so I pressed Shift A, I went here to mesh and I added a plane, and I just scaled the plane up really big, and I also scaled it up on the Y axis to make it longer. And then I went into edit mode, and I just selected the two vertices on the back, and I extruded the vertices up on the Z axis to make kind of like a back wall. And then I selected the two vertices on the edge here, and I pressed Control B to add a bevel, and then you can scroll your mouse wheel up to add more cuts, and I'm just going to place that there. and then back in object mode using the object context menu you can just shade the object smooth and then I also added a camera and just pointed it at the scene and then also if you go right over here to the world properties I deleted the world and that way it is fully black so that you'll be able to see the light projector better and then I did also add just a few small lights here just to kind of light up the robots so that you can see them better so to add the light projector I'm gonna press shift a and let's go down here to light and I am going to add the spotlight and I can bring the spotlight over here and I can also rotate it over and I will scale it up and make it a little bit bigger. And then I will hold down the Z button and go into the rendered mode just so I can see how that's looking. And then if you click right over here on the object data properties, we can turn the power up. So for now, I'm just gonna make the power brighter so you can see it better. And I want it to kind of be also lighting up some of the ground, so I'll just bring it down like that. You can also double tap the R key and double tapping the R key will enable the trackball rotation and you can just kind of rotate that around. So let's now click right over here to go to the shading workspace. So in the work shading workspace, I have the shader editor right here and then the 3D viewport here, and I'm gonna hold down the Z button and then go into the rendered mode. So with the light selected, I wanna click on use nodes. And so this is going to enable nodes for the spotlight. So I can now just turn up the emission strength to make it brighter, and I could also change the color if I want to. But in order to add an image to the light source, I need to add an image here, and I need to put the image into the color to replace it for the default color. So I'm gonna press Shift A, let's go to the search, and I can search for an image texture and let's drop the image texture right here And then I can plug the color up to the color of the emission And then I can just click on the open button to open an image So for demonstration in this video, I'm going to be using this background image here from Pixabay This is a free image I'll have a link in the description if you'd like to download it on Pixabay and then also later in this video I'll be using this earth hologram video again This is a free video from Pixabay links in the description if you'd like to download it But first I'm just going to add in the image 
image. So let's click on this and then I can click on open image. But you can add whatever image you want. So now right here on the strength, I'm just gonna turn this up to make it brighter. And you can see that it does look blue, so it is the color of the image. But we can't actually see the image data. And that is because I need to use the normal from the texture coordinate and I need to add it to the vector. Now I'm gonna be using the Node Wrangler add-on. So if you don't have the Node Wrangler enabled, you can click on edit and you can go to the preferences. And then over there on the add-ons tab, just search for Node Wrangler and you can check mark the Node Wrangler add-on. And then with the Node Wrangler enabled, you can just select the image and you can press Control T. And Control T will add the texture coordinate and mapping. And then I wanna use the normal. So let's take the normal from the texture coordinate and I can put that into the vector. And then the mapping vector can just go into the vector of the background. So the mapping node can be used to change the location, the rotation and scale of the image. So I'm now gonna go over all the different settings that you can change to adjust how the image looks. So for starters, there's the strength. So you can turn this up if you wanna make the image brighter. And then there's also some settings right over here. So if you just select the light and go to the object data properties, you can also change the color of the light over here. And that is basically just gonna adjust the hue. So you can still see the image, but it's just gonna change the color. Now you can see that it's very blurry and that is because of this radius here. So if you wanna make it more blurry, you can actually turn the radius up. And I think that actually re looks really cool. Maybe not that strong, but I think it does look really cool to light up the robot's metal. And if it's blurred, then the reflection isn't going to show the image data because it's so blurred. But if you wanna see the image better, you can turn the radius down. So you could turn it down all the way to zero. And now it is very sharp. And then you can also change the beam shape. So you can change the spot size. If you wanna make this bigger, you can turn it up and then it's going to cover more area. Or you can also turn it down. And then there also is a blend here. So if you turn the blend up, the edge is gonna be more faded. Or if you turn the blend down, it's gonna be much sharper. Now the image isn't really in the center and you can actually see that there is a seam there because the image is ending and then it's showing the other image. So to fix this, we can use the mapping node. So you can use the rotation to kind of rotate this around. You can also change the scale. So what I'm gonna do is click on the top scale, drag all the way down, and then I can drag back and forth and that is gonna change the size of it. So I'm gonna make it much smaller so I can see that better. Now you can see that it's repeating the image a bunch of times, so it's basically tiling. But if you don't want it to be tiling, you can can click here on repeat and you can change it instead to clip and if you change it to clip it's only going to show the image once so then you could just kind of change the scale you could scale it up make it a bit bigger and you could also change the location so I think I will bring it up a little bit and then this wasn't actually a square image it was more like a widescreen resolution so I'm going to drag this out just to make it longer just about right there and then I can also rotate the light and I'm going to rotate it up and like bring it right there now you can see here on the edges there is a little bit of stretching and warping and so if you want to fix that, there is a simple node setup that you can add. So I'm going to bring the texture coordinate back here, and then I'm going to press Shift A, and I'm going to go to the search, and I'm going to search for the vector math node. And I want to stick the vector math in between the texture coordinate and the mapping. And then I want to click on the add here, and I actually want to change this to divide. So I now need to press Shift A. I'm going to go to the search, and I'm going to search for the separate XYZ, and let's drop the separate XYZ down here. And then I want to take the normal, and I want to put that into the vector of the separate XYZ. And then I can just take this Z value and I wanna put it into the other vector here on the divide. And now that is gonna fix that little bit of stretching there on the edges. So now it looks very similar to a video projector that you would watch a movie on. And speaking of videos, I also wanna show you how you can add in a video which is actually animated. So to add in a video, we can just click on the X button here to get rid of this image. And then we can click on the open button and open up a video. So the video that I'm gonna be using is this Earth hologram free video and this is from pixabay.com again links in the description if you'd like to use the same one so I'm going to click on this and then just click on open image so even though this was an image texture you can actually add in video files and then if for some reason you don't see these frame settings you need to click right here and you need to make sure it is set to movie now I want to leave the start frame at one because I want the video to start at one but then right here on the frames I want to turn this up to a really big number and that way it's going to use all the frames in the video now, if you don't have a timeline right down here in the bottom of your screen, then what you can do is just click right up here when the crosshair appears and you can click and drag down just to split the window. And then you can click right here to change the editor type and you can change it to the timeline. I already have a timeline, so I don't need this, but you can add a timeline if you need to. So if you're in rendered mode, you can drag the timeline around, but you can see it's not really actually moving the video. And that is because here on the earth image,
image, we need to turn on the auto refresh. So if you turn on the auto refresh, now I can drag this around and you can see that it's going to update. And it is a little bit hard to see, but if I zoom in here and then kind of drag this around, you can see the earth is definitely moving. Now it is kind of a bit stretched. So if you want to fix that, we can just change this with the mapping. So you can use the scale and just kind of scale this around. So I want to bring this up like that. And then I can also click and drag down to select all of them. And I can drag it down to make it smaller. And then you can also just rotate the light. So I'm just going to rotate the spotlight by hitting the R key. You can also double tap the R key and that'll use the trackball rotation. And I can just rotate this around. And then I can also scale this up a bit on the Y axis and the X axis and make it a bit bigger. And then also you can see that it's kind of being cut off. And so if that's happening, you can go right over here to the spot size and you can just make that bigger. Now, if you want to have more control over the colors, what you can do is press shift A and you can go down here to color and then you can choose any of these nodes. So there's a brightness and contrast. There's also a hue saturation value. I'm going to add RGB curves and then you can drop the RGB curves right here between the earth and the emission. And then you can drag around these values so you can add different tabs so I could like make this a bit brighter. I could also click right here on the B for blue and I could add a bit more blue just by dragging this up. And I could also add a bit more red if I want to. Now to be able to see the beams of light in the atmosphere, I'm going to be using a very easy and effective method for adding fog into your scenes. And it's actually the same method that I used in my fog tutorial. So I have a tutorial on how to add fog to your 3D scenes in Blender. If you'd like to check out that video, the link will be in the description. But to add the fog, I'm just going to go back to solid view and then I can press shift A and I'm going to go to mesh and I can just add a cube. And I'm going to scale the cube up really big so that it fits the entire scene because I want the fog to be in the entire scene. And then on this cube here, right over here on the shader editor, I can click on new to add a new material. Now I don't want to use the principled shader so I can select it and press X to delete and then I can press shift A and I'm going to go here to the search and I'm going to search for the principled volume. So let's drop the principled volume right here and then I can plug the volume into the volume of the material output and make sure it is in the volume because we don't want it to be in the surface. So I can now go back into the rendered view and you're going to see that everything is fully black. And that is because of the density. So right now the density is turned way too high. So I can just drag it down. And if you want to make it very subtle, you can just make it a very small number. Or if you want the fog to be very dense, you could turn that up a bit. So I'm just going to turn it down to maybe like a 0 0.05. And then you can also change the color of the fog just by changing the color here on the principled volume. So I might make this just a slight blue color and maybe make it a bit brighter. And now you can see the light beams coming through the fog. And then also you can select the light and you can go right over here to the emission and you could turn up the emission strength so that it is brighter and so you, that way you'll be able to see the light better through the fog. So that is it. That is how you add light projectors in Blender. And again, if you'd like to download the free project files, they'll be available for free free on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page with the links in the description. So I hope you found this video helpful and thank you for watching.